Hi, my name is Lily Tori, and I'm very excited to present my team's project on the correlation between eye size and habitat and sex in tarantulas. To begin, I wanted to provide some background about eye size variation. Eyes have two main properties, resolution, a measure of detail, and sensitivity or contrast detection. When one of these components is improved, it is typically to the detriment of the other due to the physical structures that they require. However, both can be improved when the absolute size of the eye is increased. Increased eye size also provides animals with a greater field of view. Thus, eye size typically reflects the relative importance of vision for an animal. Eye size variation is measured in two primary ways. Absolute eye size tells us the direct difference in eye size. Larger absolute eye size creates a larger field of view and room for more photoreceptors, which allow for improved resolution and sensitivity. So larger eyes have the potential to be all around better. Relative eye size is absolute eye size in relation to body size. Larger relative eye size suggests that there was a greater selection for vision and thus that vision is of greater importance for an animal. So, as you can see, the fly on the left definitely has larger eyes relative to its body than the humpback whale. While eye size varies across the animal kingdom, it can also vary on a more micro scale, for example, across species within closely related groups. Eye size often varies across species in relation to ecological factors, such as adult habitat, mating habitat, and daily activity pattern, in other words, diurnal versus nocturnal animals. These differences can occur due to differing survival needs and conditions. So, as I mentioned before, eye size can vary based on habitat. One example of this can be seen in frogs and toads. In a recent study, scansorial or climbing species, which you can see an example of on the right, were found to have the largest relative eyes out of the six adult habitats. And this is likely due to the complexity of the arboreal habitats and the openness of these areas, which may expose them to more predators. Eye size can also vary based on sex. This is often due to mating behaviors and other sex-specific behaviors. Here you can see that male and female horse flies have differently shaped eyes. The eyes of males, which you can see on the right, are larger with a higher resolution and or sensitivity and a larger field of view, and this aids them in locating a mate. So let's talk about tarantulas. Tarantulas are a family of large, hairy spiders with acute vibration detecting abilities. And it has been widely assumed that vision is of low importance for these animals because they have very small eyes relative to their bodies and their other sensory systems are more well-developed. For these reasons, tarantula vision has been largely unstudied. Recently, however, researchers have found that tarantulas have a large diversity of options indicating the possibility of color vision, and therefore, that their eyes may be more complex than we thought. It has been commonly observed that arboreal tarantulas may have better visual abilities than terrestrial or burrowing species, but this has never been proven. Additionally, it is important to note that adult male and female tarantulas have different behaviors and look different. Females tend to stay in place while males wander long distance in the open looking for females. Also, females often have larger bodies than males, which you can see in the photos. So this brings me to our research question, which was, how does eye size vary in relation to habitat and sex in tarantulas? I predicted that arboreal tarantulas would have larger eyes in relative terms and possibly in absolute terms than terrestrial tarantulas because their visual environment is more complex with a larger threat of predation and a larger difficulty to catch prey. I also predicted that male tarantulas would have larger eyes in relative and possibly absolute terms than female tarantulas in order to travel and locate a mate. Tarantulas have four eye pairs made up of two rows with four eyes in each row. The anterior median eyes, or AMEs, are located in the front middle and are thought to be used to see objects that are close by. The other three eye pairs are known as the secondary eyes, and these eyes have a light reflecting layer known as a tapetum. It has been theorized that they are used to see in dim light and darkness. For each genus, we gathered eye diameters for each of the four eye pairs. 
because tarantula eyes are not all perfectly round, we use the diameter at the widest part for the absolute eye diameter when multiple measurements were available. We also recorded the carapace length or the length of the head of the spider for each genus. And we define the relative eye size as the absolute eye diameter divided by the carapace length. We would like to extend a huge thank you to the World Spider Catalog who made this project possible. We collected the majority of our measurements from published species descriptions available on the World Spider Catalog website. However, collecting measurements was not always easy. Species descriptions were often written in languages other than English, such as German, French, and Portuguese, and with older papers, some of which dated back to the late 1800s, Latin. Even with the aid of translators, finding published eye measurements was virtually impossible for some species. Some species have not been redescribed in years, and I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that hundred year old papers often did not provide any eye measurements at all. Luckily, the one shown did. Despite these hurdles, we were ultimately able to collect measurements from 78 tarantula species across 27 genera of the 148 known tarantula genera. With eight arboreal genera, 18 terrestrial, and one genus that was primarily terrestrial, but contained one reported arboreal species. Our sample included 66 female and 63 male individual specimens. Also, of the 78 species sampled, 26 species only had complete measurements available for one sex. Now I'm going to move into the results. Firstly, we confirmed that females are larger than males, not including leg span. Here you will see graphs for each of the eye pairs with the sexes on the x-axis and the absolute di diameter of the eye on the y-axis. Females have larger eyes than males in absolute terms in four out of four eye pairs. We predicted that males may have larger absolute eye sizes than females, but this turned out to not be the case. However, now I'm showing you the same comparison, but for relative eye size on the y-axis. Males have larger eyes relative to their body size than females in two of the four eye pairs, the AMEs and the ALEs, or the frontal eye pairs. And this matches what we predicted based on males' visual ecology. And now to move on to differences related to habitat. We found that arboreal species tend to be smaller than terrestrial species in terms of their carapace lengths. So now I'm showing you the graphs for the four eye pairs with carapace length on the x-axis and absolute eye diameter on the y-axis. Green dots represent arboreal species and the other dots represent terrestrial species. Looking at the distribution of the green and brown dots, you can see that the eyes of the arboreal species are significantly larger in absolute terms for two of the eye pairs, the AMEs and the ALEs. Looking at the slopes of the regression lines that represent the ratio of eye diameter over carapace length, aka relative eye size, you can see that for three of the four eye pairs, the AMEs, ALEs, and PLEs, arboreal species have larger eyes relative to their bodies. Oddly, the PMEs are very similar in both absolute and relative size. Firstly, we showed that tarantula's visual needs may depend on sex and habitat. And while females are larger and have larger eyes, males have relatively larger AMEs and ALEs for their body size. This demonstrates that the frontal eye pairs may play a larger role for males than females, which could be due to the need to travel to locate a mate. For habitat, we found that arboreal species tend to be smaller than terrestrial species. However, arboreal species have relatively larger AMEs, ALEs, and PLEs for their body size. The absolute of diameter of the AMEs and ALEs is also larger in arboreal species, showing that vision may have more significance to arboreal species and this may be due to their visual environment being more complex than that of terrestrial species. We are planning to continue work on this project and collect more measurements to expand our sample size and conduct a phylogenetic analysis of the data. On the right, you can see a figure from a study that one of our co-authors was a part of, tracing arboreality on the one side and greenness on the other. And we plan to do something similar for habitat and eye size with our data. Our research sparked some new questions. 
For one thing, what are the reasons that males have larger frontal eyes than females? And why do arboreal species have larger eyes relative to their bodies in three of their eye pairs? Does the placement of the eyes on the carapace vary based on sex and or habitat? And more generally, how good is tarantula vision and what is it used for? We would like to thank the following wonderful people. Dr. Catherine Scott for invaluable help in plotting our data in R, Dr. Jonas Wolf for sending us measurements from other mygalomorphs, and Dr. Corey Richard Zawaki and Dr. Janet Waldeck for organizing the research collaboration between Pitt and Alderdice High School, as well as all of their support. We would also like to thank the World Spider Catalog and all tarantula taxonomists. We respectfully acknowledge that all of our research team was based on the traditional ancestral lands of the Osage and Shawnee nations. Thank you for listening.